Chapter two of Her Land is called Rash Advances. The three men encounter several of the women, Alima, Celis, and Elidor, in the boughs of trees. Terry attempts to capture one of the women by offering her a necklace. Once the women leave, the men then enter the town, marveling over the architecture, the landscaping, and the cleanliness. They continue to suggest that there must be men here. Things are too well designed, too orderly, and there are children around. The men are herded toward a large stone building, and when they revolt by drawing a revolver, they're restrained. Van explains, we were born inside, struggling manfully, but held secure most womanfully, in spite of our best endeavors. So carried and so held, we came into a high inner hall, gray and bare, and were brought before a majestic gray-haired woman who seemed to hold a judicial position. There was some talk, not much, among them, and there suddenly fell upon each of us at once a firm hand, holding a wetted cloth before mouth and nose, anesthesia. The chapter then closes with the men anesthetized in an exciting cliffhanger for readers. Here is the first confrontation between experiences and theory. This is a pattern that will continue throughout the novel. Even as the empirically gathered evidence mounts, the three men resist the logical conclusion. A world with no men is impossible to them for varying reasons. They continue to offer reasons why it cannot be. In doing so, they continue to reveal their own biases and limitations more than they reveal any factual reason as to why women couldn't succeed on their own. They offer no factual reasons beyond the simple and repeated ideas that it cannot be. When the men encounter a group of confident women working in unison, they're treated with calm but firm restraint. Every aspect of their capture and imprisonment is handled without drama. Only the men themselves are alarmed. 